Mr. Sadiq Kesmechi, Chairman of the Board of Trustees of Fatih University, Professor Dr. Serif Ari Tekeland, Rector of Fatih University, faculty and students, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. It is a great honor to be with you today, and I want to express my most sincere gratitude to the university leadership for this honorary doctor. Indeed, occasions like these are happy ones. But the honor is heightened when it is a respected institution such as Fatih University that is recognizing and appreciating the leadership in Rwanda and our modest contribution to the world we live in. Let me say at the outset that in many ways, this honor reflects the efforts of the Rwandan people who for the last 17 years have worked together to restore peace, security, and national unity and reconciliation. They have managed to overcome serious adversity and have now embraced our nation's collective aspirations for development and prosperity. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I am sure you agree with me that we live in challenging times characterized by phenomenal change. And although the change may be at a breathless pace, the 21st century also offers us and future generations opportunities that we should seize to influence the direction of change in order to maximize its benefits to humankind. The ability to influence events has always been the hallmark of any enduring civilization. Throughout history, there have been changes that have propelled societies to a higher level of development. Some have been faster and sometimes they have been accompanied by crisis and upheaval, others have been gradual and peaceful. But whichever sort, change must be managed and directed in order to move forward and maintain equilibrium within and among states and to manage and influence it in a collectively beneficial manner, leaders need long-term vision, an understanding of their society's situation, and the ability to motivate their people to keep working for prosperity and peace. The people of modern Turkey know this very well, because you have had such a visionary leaders going back to Mustafa Kemal Atatürk, and the results in your country show this. In Rwanda, leaders and the citizens are working together to transform our country to a level where we can enjoy her standards of living. 
we believe that with the examples available and increasing collaboration with institutions such as this university, that transformation will definitely happen faster. I'm very glad to be talking about the power of leadership and knowledge in harnessing change to benefit humankind at a university where leaders in various fields are formed. You have the opportunity and even a duty to use this exposure to influence events in your own country and also reach out to other parts of the world to create better and closer relations. Distinguished audience, dear students, the 21st century has been marked by several things that have impacted individual nations and also relations between nations. First has been the global economic crisis, particularly in the international financial system and the Eurozone. This has proven the extent of the links and the dependency between nations, even the most developed economies, this has been evident. It has also become all the more evident that global issues can only be solved collectively. Second, have been the political crisis in some parts of the world, such as the northern parts of our continent, Africa, and the Middle East. These have served to confirm the principle that no nation, however powerful, can act unilaterally and in a sense have clarified the question of sovereignty. It has been made clear that a detached leadership cannot be successful. Citizens have the right to participate in national affairs. This cannot be denied them with insincere, insincere excuses. Some may term these excuses as domestic matters or national sovereignty. Developments like these concern us all. Today's reality is that we all are our brother's keeper. In solving political problems in which the contract between leaders and their citizens has clearly broken down, we are going to see an increasing international intervention. In Africa, this is already happening in different parts, Somalia, Sudan, and others. The third major change in this century has revolutionized social and national relations that has revolutionized that is in the field of information and communication technology. The pace of development in ICT has significantly changed the speed of production, use, dissemination, and access to knowledge and information. In this sense, and especially with the use of social media, it has altered the balance of power within societies and between nations by 
democratizing information and knowledge, ordinary citizens may now have more influence and power than they have ever had before. Nations that recognize and harness the power of new technology will be the leaders in the 21st century. Equally, leaders that can take advantage of this power will propel their countries to a higher level of development. That is why in Rwanda, we are investing in education, science and technology, because they have the most potential to transform our country, bring the greatest benefits to our people and make it possible for us to play a significant role in international relations. It is another reason, another reason why I am delighted about the relationship between Fatih University and Rwanda. I hope the award of an honorary doctorate to me will mark the beginning of collaboration between this university and Rwandan universities so that together we can contribute to greater human understanding and better lives for our people. I am pleased to note that FATI is a privately founded university. We shall share a belief, and we continue to share belief in the power of the private sector to drive economic and social transformation. And in Rwanda, we value innovation, entrepreneurship, and partnership in raising the living standards of our people because our mission, indeed, that of any committed leadership of any nation is to get them to be better off tomorrow than what people are today. That is why, and once again, I am grateful for this great honor that you have bestowed on me, and I can assure you that we will always cherish the association with the Fati University, which is taking root today. I once again wish to thank you for your friendship and for your very kind attention, and I will happily, uh, as requested, take any questions from the audience. Thank you very much.